My name is Matthew Round, and uh, I'm not familiar to a lot of you. My story through seminary is somewhat unique, um, but let me give you a little bit of background about myself. I was raised in a Christian home. It was uh, my honor and privilege to be a part of a family who claimed Christ and who instilled that in me at a young age. I believed I was saved young, and unfortunately, I stayed young in my faith. Through high school, led Bible studies on campus, went to college, uh, the Air Force Academy, firmly believing that I was a Christian, and uh, yet never, maybe like some of you, having been challenged in whether or not it was my faith or the faith of my parents. And uh, God was gracious to me. He allowed me to live through a time where I had to come to the realization that he was my savior and that I was called to live for him. And uh, it took the form of me conforming to the world around me, not in anything drastic, not in anything that they would say I was a bad person, maybe even better than most around me. But to me, I knew it was a compromise. It was a stagnation, and uh, it was a detriment to my testimony. After two years at the Air Force Academy, it became increasingly clear that that wasn't where God wanted me. Uh, my desires to fly and kill people and break things, as is the stated mission of the Air Force, was no longer present in my life, and uh, really there was nothing that had replaced it. It was kind of a scary time. I came home, started dating my high school sweetheart again, uh, who would eventually agree to marry me, another sign of God's grace in my life. Um, and as I held every job imaginable, and I firmly believe that, from construction to daycare to serving in a restaurant, progressed through the master's college and finished there with the CPS program, and uh, it began to become increasingly clear in my life that I had a heart's desire for ministry, I had gifts that were affirmed by godly men in my life, and that the direction I needed to go was to pursue further training to equip me for a life that would ultimately be dedicated to ministry. And God's grace never, never goes anywhere through that process, does it? I came to the Master's Seminary, convinced that this was the right place to be, that this was the right doctrine, the right theology, and the right environment. I studied hard for three years through the help of a gracious wife, went from one child to four children, and uh, then three years into seminary, actually looking towards that light at the end of the tunnel, the graduation that is to come, the money dried up, and uh, tips weren't they, what they were, the economy had taken its toll. And it was the decision of whether or not to continue and take on added debt or to step away from seminary for a time or forever. I didn't know. And so I stepped away from seminary. And unlike the man of God that I claimed to be, I got angry. I questioned why all the preparation, why the hours, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the Greek, the Hebrew, if that wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. And again, through godly men in my life, through the prayers of family, through a gracious and encouraging and challenging wife, men, I came to understand that our ministry does not start when we graduate. Your ministry is now. My ministry was to my family, and even if I had three years of training and no degree, God had called me to be a man who would speak for him in this world into whatever circumstance I was put in. And so as one who considered myself wise in so many ways, who was so eager to rush ahead in my own plans, through God's grace, he took me out. And for two years, he built into my life the idea that I was his, and that it was his timing that was going to be accomplished in my life, that it was his purpose that I was to pursue and not mine. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, Consider your calling, brethren, there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. And the base things of the world and the despised, God has chosen. These things that are not, so that he may nullify the things that are, so that no man may boast for, before God. But by his doing you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. So that just, it is, just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. That's my only boast. After two years out, a job that I was in that was providing well for my family that would never change their work hours, changed their work hours so that I could come back. 
I told them I was quitting. They said, why don't we make change changes so that you can stay? I don't know why. <laughs> I don't have a reason other than that God has chosen to take a simple foolish vessel and he's seen it fit to complete my training here. Future plans, uh, we're currently looking for places to minister. And I'm terrified <laughs> to a certain extent because there is that great unknown out there. But what an encouragement to know that I would never have scripted my life the way it's come out. And yet God has proven himself over and over to be faithful. To be faithful when I'm not. To be faithful to provide above and beyond anything that I could imagine. Anything that I would dream of. He's proven that he will do it. So the terror is replaced by anticipation and excitement. Because he's given me a ministry today. To my family, to students in 12th grade Bible that I teach at Santa Clarita Christian. To the young men and women in my church who I long to see grow up in their faith earlier than I did. And brothers, just before I step down, I would encourage you. Some of you, like me, need to be encouraged. You think you're wise. Remember, our wisdom is nothing when compared to God. And some of you need to remember in the midst of the Greek and Hebrew, you feel foolish. I did too. <laughs> brothers, that's who God's called. He's pleased to use us as weak and broken vessels to his glory. Amen.